All right, first things first I'm gonna say is that um, there's a good chance I may actually get um, access to a mobile phone this week. And although I'm not a big fan of them, um, I can see, well, I'll be able to use like um, my gantry thing, uh, my gaming gantry again and do like proper nice overheads, which would be great. Um, so I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm just gonna see if, um, if the video is half decent and try to do an overview. I've got everything uh, popped up onto the map. I'll do like a big giant uh, uh, over, like I said, an overhead thing, and then I'm gonna hopefully just try to take my time with the camera. Uh, the thing is, is that I got to be extremely strategic the way I position it if I want to show uh, from one area to the next. One thing I am gonna say is um, I do have to start preparing myself for is all this part of the map when I get into uh, January 1915. I haven't been using it. It hasn't. It's not part of the um, scenarios, the link scenarios for Tannenberg or Gal uh, and Galicia. So I have to start thinking about that, uh, both sides, and that's going to be a, you know, a bit of a head scratcher for sure. The other thing is um, I'm starting to prepare. I don't know what you would call them, report cards or um, uh, player aid things or whatever for each um, uh, belligerent going into 1915 so I, when I start getting into the grand campaign and for Russia in the Eastern Europe conflict zone and at this moment that's the only conflict uh, they have to deal with right now uh, the only way um, you can uh, they incur uh, demoralization points for the loss of urban hex sides is in Warsaw and over in Riga everybody else uh, like even Minsk for goodness sakes uh, nothing um, so the two, the only two ways right now the, uh, the Austro-Germans can basically, um, uh, get these guys to, um, suffer demoralization is through, obviously, combat, like, you know, uh, loss of troops and Riga and Warsaw. Um, they're at 315 demoralization points, uh, 318, sorry, um, at 600, they, um, uh, the Russians will uh, encounter shaken national morale no matter when uh, it occurs. Um, and when that happens, they'll no longer uh, be able to do uh, supplied attacks and so on and so forth. But that's a long way away, and it's, uh, I just find it interesting that, um, yeah, so it's going gonna to be a, a, another thing to think about. So I'll try to, like I said, if, here's the general whatever. I'll try to slow, see if I can move it a little bit. Um, I know you're not going to be able to see too much, so I'll, I'll try to. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just slowly bring it in. Hold on, here I gotta look. Like I said, I've got lots of things to look at. There's an awful lot of things on the on the table, and um, you know, precarious stacking, if you want to call it that way. So I think I'll try. That'll be the extent. I'll go this way. I think. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. And then I'll maybe slide this thing down, and then we can talk a bit. If I can bring it down a bit. I just please God in heaven, don't tip or fall over. I lose a freaking I lose my mind. Okay, so I'll zoom in just a wee bit until I get rid of the side of the table and see if that works. All right. So what do we see here? Can you see this crazy thing? Yes, you can. So, uh, and I'll get to this point at here because it's just off camera. So, this is for me to represent the fact that um, uh, right now there's going to be a meeting, uh, not yet, but uh, soon, uh, Ludendorff and Hindenburg, the, um, um, uh, the commanders for the Eastern Europe conflict zone for the Central Powers, uh, yeah, for the Central Powers actually, they uh, override uh, Breivich. Um, They've decided they're going to call a meeting. Um, it's going to be in Danzig, where uh, the garrison uh, corps commander, Charles Tortoise, is located. Uh, Falkenhayn, in my timeline, is um, the overall um, uh, commander for the Central Power. See, he's like right beside the Kaiser. I'm using this horse uh, thing to kind of say, hey, the Kaiser's popping on over here. Got lots of double uh, lines uh, to get the Danzig, so it's not like I'm causing any grief. Um, which means now that uh, Falkenhayn, if he's the, uh, 
the head of everything kind of thing. I have to figure out who's going to be the um, head of the Western Europe conflict zone and so on and so forth, but that's a, a days away. Now, why is there going to be a meeting? It's going to be a meeting because they're going to show it to you later over in Bromberg, if you can, or is it? No, it's still off camera. Uh, that's where um, the Reserve Corps, uh, uh, sorry, the Reserve Festung divisions. Now, remember Charles Tortoise, these little red things over here. Those are just to represent where the uh, Festung divisions are popping out. So he's been in, he's in, uh, um, been basically in charge of uh, stripping the garrison troops and converting them into um, Festung or fortress uh, infantry divisions. And then, um, oh, it's all been put on an amazing little timetable. And, uh, you know, so many are, are getting um, sent out here, there, and everywhere. That's basically what's happening. However, one of the stipulations was, and he doesn't take his orders, Charles Tortoise takes his orders straight from Falkenhayn, uh, not from the, um, um, the, the conflict zone uh, commanders, uh, Ludendorff and uh, Hindenburg. And part of his stipulation, this freaked me out, man, I'll show it to you later, like I said, when we get to the Bra Bromberg thing. I just found this out la uh, last week, that in real life, uh, Falkenhayn kept um, some reserve, I don't, a corps or whatever, but certainly some reserve divisions um, for the Battle of Ardai was something about to do um, that happened uh, previous in 1915, at which I, uh, I can't remember what, uh, what, the, what battle they were alluding to, but I guess it scared something about the Germans. He never wanted that to happen again. And they were saying that later on, potentially some people said that if he had only ever released those things, maybe that it could have tipped things over again. Uh, I just find this ironic because uh, I didn't know this and then, uh, you know, um, a few months ago or whatever, I've had these uh, Festung Reserve Division sitting here and they're not allowed to be re uh, let go unless uh, they're replenished somehow through reinforcements or, you know, or, you know, um, some troops uh, brought in from the, uh, another conflict zone to, ooh, um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, I just was like, wow, that's fast. Well, for me, fascinating. Um, so, like I said, all these little uh, colored bits are just uh, to identify, and it's not part of uh, Dervel Krieg or whatever. It's part of my little world um, to identify where the core, uh, who's in, you know, uh, for the cores here. So that that's eleventh core here. We've got the ninth army direct uh, doing these guys, and then you can see these strength points. I don't know. I'm hoping you can. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more and that'll be the last time kind of thing and then we'll go from there. Um, here, here, how's that? And that'll help. Um, so, if, like for example here, that's 9th Army, uh, 9th Army um, HQ. It's got an engineering uh, regiment there. It's under the, These are repetitious numbers, for, uh, like as in it's redundant information right now. It's taking up space. I could get rid of them. Just right now, visually or whatever, I just would like to uh, use them. Uh, so that's 9th Army, and yet again, that's just a color code to say that it's 9th Army, and, and he's got 10 supply points. Uh, no infantry, no cavalry. Uh, th this would be BG-6. I could go and look it up in the book, like I said, and that's under 9th uh, Army, overall 9th Army control, 9th uh, Army direct because of its color, and he's got 10 strength points. You get the idea? Um, and so on and so forth. So we've got 11th Corps, and then we go on from here. These guys with the funky little whatever uh, things underneath, that's uh, part of the Kriegfrosch, and they are actually under uh, direct control um, f with Hindenburg and Ludendorff. They were part of Operation Luther, which is kind of potentially still happening. This is why they're having this uh, little discussion, uh, or decided to have this discussion here, because they think they've found uh, potentially... Um, a breaking uh, a spot where they can actually you know break the backs uh, of the Russians and maybe get them to uh, sue for peace potentially in the spring or whatever uh, the thing is they would like to have these um, um, ultra reserve reserve or whatever like you know um, must be replenished before their uh, um, yeah you can't ever have the um, you can't have the tank empty is basically what uh, Falcon Han wants to make sure of and uh, Ludendorff and Hindenburg are saying actually we would like to have the tank empty uh, now's the chance can we do it but this is counter to a lot of things which they're doing like I said politically they really want to get rid of uh, the troops in East Prussia and Lindenberg and Ludendorff are gonna um, uh, Hindenburg and Lindendorf are going to basically uh, try to convince them, look, uh, we can't get rid of them that way. 
uh, this way, we have to get rid of them in another way, where you're just slamming your head against a brick wall. Um, and that's basically it. So that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to zoom out again and we'll go from there. So I'm also, I wrote down all their objective, objectives from last year, uh, last turn. So, um, which technically probably was last year in our timeline. Uh, and I'll have to see which, because uh, there will be some shifts over there. But this is I'm probably not going to be doing this for another couple of weeks, uh, any move. So let me zoom out again and let's get out there a bit. Okay. Like I said, just to that point where, ah, there's, there we go. I'm going to zoom it out again. Like I said, uh, you may not be able to see all the numbers and everything, but um, at least, uh, um, oh, God, I almost hit some counters. Wasn't looking. So uh, we'll go from there. So there, uh, now you can see the uh, brown bricks. So those are the super ultra reserve troops. Uh, there is some guys just right here, okay? This is the kicker. On a couple of trains coming here, are is uh, full on ready to, ready for combat. Not replacement troops here. Four infantry divisions, German infantry divisions, uh, a totaling up of sixteen strength points. Uh, also a two strength point uh, cavalry division and an additional five replacement points. Holy smokes! Okay, and that's just in addition. Then we've got another four uh, Fustun uh, infantry, uh, another infantry division here. We've got three now over there. Um, I'm just saying, uh, uh, it's looking, it, it's looking interesting. It's looking very interesting. You know, let me get back to the very back here, and I think that should be it for this bit. And then maybe we'll slide over very quickly for the. Um, yeah, you can see just see the yellow guy. So this guy here, this is the sixth core uh, Kleist. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'll have to take a look. Or Kosh? No, 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 not Kosh. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, hold on. What the hell am I saying here? I can I can take a look here. Um, that's the sixth core. So it's Kleist von Kleist. So these guys are Austro-Hungarian uh, engineering units. The second, third, and fifth. They've been um, repairing German rail, and the way I did it in my world is that it's three times slower for them because they're they're not used to doing it that way. And that's them in control. I had three guys, so I could get rid of um, one rail and uh, one rail hex in one turn kind of thing. So now what I'm doing is they're going to be removed from play. They will not be returned until April. They're they're going to go under tr uh, go into training, and I'm going to have a uh, these guys will be able to do each one. But I want to keep them as a. Um, we'll figure out that later. Maybe it, I should because it's still a core. Yeah, and I, I want to have that little function. Um, but they will not have to have. Um, yeah, why not? As long as you're still in the, I can have like multiple. Uh, of course, I could do like three hexes in a boom, boom, boom. We could go mental with a ra uh, rail. That's basically, and that's why I've got the uh, arrows here. Um, so come April, and I can't do anything anyways. I can't convert rail right now. So they're off to off for training is the way I'm looking at it. And uh, come April, they will be able to behave essentially like uh, German. Uh, they'll know how to um, uh, convert rail German style, essentially. is That's why I'm doing it. And it'll be part of another stipulation of maybe an, an extension of the Katowice, uh conference agreement. Maybe it'll be part two or something. This will be some other little wrinkle of, uh, well, you know, you scratch uh, our back, we'll, uh, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. Um, I've got these little uh, that little pylon here because I think this is a glaring error that the Russians didn't see. And I really want to exploit it. Uh, everything west of the Vesloka over to here... Um, is including this bit is um because we follow the river line uh is under german control so the all these austro-german troops uh, uh, austro-hungarian troops are under german control uh the vorsch army over here uh fourth corps he's got a massive thing to do but i can get here in one turn uh, so I'm gonna I'm trying as hard as possible to eventually by the end of November we're gonna uh, just squeeze the living dickens out of these guys. Um, we'll see, but this is uh, I think a kicker. We'll do whatever I can. Got a unbelievable amount of strength points there. 
So that's it. That that to me, I said, okay, that's a biggie. Um, and then I'll, I don't know if I can really do the, maybe I'll just do the Austro-Hungarian separately at some point. Uh, yeah, because my battery is actually starting to freak out. So um, I'll just zoom out again so you can see a little bit more, maybe. Right, hopefully that worked. Okay, see you later. Hope you're having a good one.